And we're back on this fabulous Monday with our second lesson on power today. This is going to be a shorter lesson than the conservation of energy lesson. Uh, there are some problems to do over power. I'm going to do one of those example problems in the end, probably the hardest one of the ones you're supposed to do. Uh, the other ones are pretty easy if you can, if you can grasp the concept of, of power. So in the PowerPoint, 5.6 power, it says the average power is the amount of work done over a given period of time. So that's a pretty easy formula if you, if you write that on here. Power P, um, like I said the other day, P is reserved for power, so they use U for potential energy. So power is the amount of work done over time. So that would be work in joules over time in seconds. So power is um, the amount of joules per second. That, that um, it's the amount of joules it takes per second um, for, for uh, an object to, to, for work to be done. Uh, so the question is then, if a joule per second is the, is the unit for power, what is a joule per second known as? What is the, uh, the, in, in other words, what is the unit for power? I'll give you a second to think about that. Okay, I always ask why. I'm going to ask what now. What is the unit for power? Yeah, what? What is the unit for power? That's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you what? What is the unit? What is the unit? What? It is what? 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 Yes, that's right. What? So a joule per second is a watt. So the unit for power is a watt. So you often hear of, of, of watts, for example, light bulbs. So a 40 watt light bulb does 40 joules of work every second. Uh, so if you have three, let's say in a light fixture, if you have three 40 watt light bulbs in there, that's doing a lot of work every second. So don't leave those lights on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's the amount of work done per second. Um, however, uh, if the force is constant and it's, and it's parallel to the displacement, we said that was work, right? So uh, let's, let's do a little re rearrangement here. If power is, is work over time and work is force times displacement, if the force is parallel to the displacement, still over time, then displacement over time, what's displacement over time? That's one of the very first formulas that we learned. Wasn't that velocity? Then you could say that force times velocity, displacement over velo uh, time is velocity, so force times velocity could also be power, also measured in watts. So there, there's two formulas for, for power. This one you see the most, work over time, this one you'll see every now and then that power is force times velocity. Uh, for example, if, uh, if you're talking about a car, uh, then a car is, is, is needs power. It needs, to do, uh, it needs to do work in a certain period of time in order to move forward. Well, we often refer to that as horsepower instead of watts. So, so the power in cars is referred is, 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 uh, is, is horsepower. So the more horsepower that a car has, the more work that, that can be done either in a shorter period of time or um, in the same amount of time it does a whole lot more work. So uh, let's say a Ferrari and a Toyota Camry are, are going to race. Um, and so all of a sudden Mark said go, the Ferrari can take off and, and reach a final velocity with a force in a, in a lot shorter time than, than, than a Toyota Camry can. That's because the engine does more work um, in, in, in an amount of time or um, does uh, more work in a shorter amount of time. So that Ferrari will reach 100 miles per hour faster than that Toyota Camry will. Does that make sense? So, so that's power. Uh, if, you're, if you're lifting a barbell uh, off the floor. It requires work um, over a period of time. To, it requires power to do that. 
but but the more work you can do, um, then you can do that in a shorter amount of time. Probably, it may take me uh, I don't know a little while to lift something off the floor, but a big strong uh, uh, male or female could could lift it a whole lot faster than I can. So uh, a bulldozer, a bulldozer does a lot of work in a shorter amount of time than me taking a shovel and shoveling it, uh, you know, shovel by shovel in a wheelbarrow in a whole lot longer amount of time. So um, uh, bulldozer has more power than, than we do. So that's the, that's the definition of, of power. Um, and so there's some problems to do over, over power um, work over time. Probably not gonna use the force times velocity, even though that, that was legal, you could use it if you needed to. Uh, it's it's work over time. There's one more subject in your in your PowerPoint, and I, I referred to this earlier when I said the efficiency of a of a internal combustion engine. Um, there's not any problems to do over efficiency, but I wanted to throw it in there because efficiency is the is the ratio of work output to energy input times 100, so you get a percentage value there. So it's how much work you get out of, of, of a machine or a system versus uh, over the amount of energy you put into it times 100. That tells you the efficiency of a machine or a system or, or what have you. And, and in the textbook, it gives you some, some typical values of, of, of efficiency of, of different machines. And objects. For example, I used an automobile earlier in my last video with energy conversions. Uh, automobiles are about 20% efficient. So they're 80% uh, not good at what they do, and they're about 20% efficient at converting chemical energy into mechanical energy to drive your car. It says hybrid vehicles are about 25% efficiency. So wow, it bumps up the, the efficiency five more percent for a hybrid electric vehicle, gas and electric vehicle. However, it says an electric motor, depending on the electric motor, is about 70 to 95% efficient. So that's why electric powered cars are way more efficient at, at converting electrical energy or electromagnetic energy into mechanical energy. They don't lose a lot of energy into the environment due to non-conservative forces. The engine, I, I doubt, heats up very uh, hot due to combustion of a gas because there's no combustion in there. It's all electric power, so they're better at converting. Um, somebody had gave me the question uh, the other day, I can't remember which class it was in, but shout out to you, whoever that was, do, do ele truly electric vehicles like a Tesla, do they require oil in the engine? And, and we looked it up and the answer was yes, they do require lubricants, but they don't require oil changes as often as, as a combustion engine does because that oil doesn't heat up and cool down and heat up and cool down and heat up and cool down like it does in a, in a typical combustion uh, engine in an automobile. Uh, human muscle, human muscle is only about 20 to 25% efficient um, at, at converting glucose into usable energy, energy that you can use to produce mechanical energy. So in order to move your arm, your arm is basically a machine, it's a lever, and your muscles are what move that lever at its pivot point, the fulcrum. So probably in physical science in eighth grade, you learned about simple machines. Well, here's the fulcrum, and my bicep is what pulls my lower arm upward, uh, like a machine. Well, this bicep muscle is only about 20 to 25% efficient at converting chemical energy into mechanical energy, energy of motion. In this case, it would be kinetic energy. Well, I guess this part of my arm would be gaining potential energy also, gravitational, if it, if it goes upward above the ground. But regardless, muscles are pretty inefficient at what they do. Well, where does that energy go? Well, doesn't our bodies heat up? They, they heat up, so does heat help you raise your arm? No. But is heat helpful in our bodies? Absolutely, from an anatomical, biological standpoint. That's why we're warm-blooded animals, because the, the heat produced in our metabolism or the conversion of chemical into, into kinetic energy is what keeps our bodies warm. So heat being a non-conservative form of energy that does not allow conservative energy to be conserved, that sounded wordy, 
that does not allow mechanical energy to be conserved. Heat is what keeps our bodies warm. And that's a good thing. I mean, that's, that's a good thing. But it, it's not good if you're wanting to use all your energy to, to move your body. Um, so what do we have to do? We have to continually refuel our bodies because, because we, we continually need energy to, to do what we do. To walk around, to talk, to, to, to write, to ride bicycles, to, to, to think, to, to breathe. We, we need energy from everything, so we need fuel to do that. We need chemical energy to do that. We can't make our own energy. We're not plants. So we have to consume energy in order to be able to, uh, to convert it. So that, that was mechanical efficiency. I thought I'd throw that in there because, uh, because uh, it, it's, we always think that, that, you know, probably systems are pretty good at what they do. They're good at converting energy, but some systems are pretty lousy at, at converting energy. Once again, cars and, and, and our muscles are pretty lousy at converting uh, into usable energy. Not to say that, once again, some of those other forms of energy are not important. Uh, um, I thought about this after, after I'd shut the video off earlier. Uh, the power in your house. The power in your house is, is measured in, in something called a kilowatt hour. So as, as, as electrical uh, energy or electricity, electromagnetic uh, energy comes into your house, uh, the meter reads how much is coming in uh, on an hourly basis. So Georgia Power, um, they, they read your meter on, on, a, on a cycle. It's like a 30-day cycle. And they, they measure how many kilowatt hours you used in that 30 days. Now, kilowatt being 1,000 watts. So uh, th that's what you get charged for. So if you're running, uh, you know, your TV all the time and your air conditioner in the summertime is set on 68 degrees and and you leave all the lights on and and everything then you're using more kilowatts of, of energy um, in, in the summertime than you would if you if you turn those off during the during the daytime or the nighttime so they charge you a, a rate per kilowatt hour that you that your house consumes and the rate is higher in the summertime than it is in the wintertime. Why? Supply and demand. People are using more energy in the summertime due to, due to, uh, it's, it's harder to cool, it takes more power to cool your house in the, in the summertime than it does to heat it in the wintertime. So we're, we're using more power in the summertime. Georgia Power has to supply that power. They have to, they have to convert chemical energy into electromagnetic energy or mechanical energy if it's, um, if it's a, uh, a turbine uh, of some sort, or nuclear energy into usable energy, if it's the power plant over in Baxley that's producing electricity, so they're having to produ provide more, produce more electricity, so they in turn pass that cost on to, to the consumer in the summertime. It's it's not a it's not a it's not a monopoly. Actually, it is a monopoly if you're a Georgia Power, but it's a government re regulated monopoly, so they can't they can't. Uh, give you some exorbitant rate during the summertime for um, for power. Um, it's, it's it is regulated by by the government. So um, bottom line is turn your lights and TVs off if you're out of the house or not using them. Um, uh, set your air conditioner on a on a decent uh, you know 74 75 in the summertime. Um, that way you won't be using too much power. Um, but anyway, let's do a power problem right quick, uh, and, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, number six on, on problem F, power, says that um, in, in 1984, Don Kane threw a flying disc, disc that stayed aloft for 16.7 seconds. Suppose Kane ran up a staircase during this time, reaching a height of 18.4 meters. If his mass was 72 kilograms, how much power was needed for Kane's ascent? Well, I've got a displacement, and I've got a uh, a time, um, and looks like if I if I use this little derivation here, that if power is work over time, and work is force times displacement over time, 
I could probably use that to figure this problem out. So I need to know, well, what force, while he runs up those staircases, what force is he having to overcome? What force is he having to supply in order for him to run up a staircase? Well, isn't he having to do, and he have to apply force at least as much as his weight is? His weight is pulling down on him due to gravity, but he's having to run up the stairs with at least that much force. So let's say his force that he has to output, his force that he has to produce, is it is at least as much as his weight. Maybe just a tiny bit more if he wants to accelerate uh, up the stairs. So his force would be his mass times gravity, mass times 9.81, that's his weight, uh, times the displacement that he runs, um, which was up the stairs is 18.4 meters over the time he has to do that. And it says he has 16.7 seconds um, while that thing he threw stays aloft. By the way, that little part just was there to throw you off. 16.7 seconds. So his mass was um, 72 kilograms times 9.81 times 18.4 meters divided by the time. So let me get an answer here. 72 times 9.81 times 18.4 is 12,996.288 divided by 16.7, and I get 778.2 watts. So it took 778.2 watts worth of power for him to run up those stairs, that, that distance or that displacement. Now, don't make this mistake. W is watt, which is the power, unit for power. Don't read a problem that says, uh, for example, number um, number two says 585 watts. That's power. Don't put that in here for W for work. Work is the W is the abbreviation for the for the, the the physical quantity work. However, W here is the unit watt for the physical quantity power. So my answer was 778.2 watts worth of power is what he had to expend. Uh, so that was that was probably the hardest of, of the of the problems. So there was only six problems and I told you to do all of them. Now you only got to do five of them. So I did number six for you. The other ones are pretty easy. They just give you, maybe they give you a, a power in watts. They give you a time in seconds. So you can multiply time over to get there to get the amount of work done. Or if they give you, uh, if they give you uh, the amount of work and they give you the power, then you can do the little switcheroo trick and work divided by power would give you time, how much long, how long it took to do um, to, for, for the power to, for the work to be done. Uh, but anyway, so that's uh, today's two lessons on conservation of energy and power. Uh, I know it was kind of a tough subject, uh, especially the conservation of energy. Uh, I may have repeated myself about, uh, I don't know, four or five times there. Um, but uh, so do those power problems. Uh, tomorrow we'll start with a whole new chapter. We're going to be doing uh, momentum tomorrow. Uh, momentum, a little preview of momentum. Uh, if you're moving in some direction and you have a mass and you have a velocity, then you have momentum. Think of a train that's moving forward, has a great momentum because it has a large mass versus a mosquito flying in that direction. Uh, not really much momentum. I wouldn't mind a mosquito running into me uh, and hitting me. Not so much a train. Uh, don't want a train running into me with more momentum. So that's where we're going uh, on tomorrow's lesson. There, I uh, can't remember, there's probably some momentum, um, some momentum problems to do. But um, if you check the daily agenda, I sent out my remind. My remind message is I've changed the agenda. Instead of Khan Academy videos for the lesson, you're going to watch my YouTube videos. But there still may be a, a, a couple of Khan Academy videos I still want you to watch because there's some good examples they use. Uh, but as far as teaching goes, I'm going to be the teacher still. Um, and so uh, be sure to check my daily agenda every day on the videos you're supposed to watch. So. Uh, Y'all have a great day. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you, hopefully you stayed safe. 
uh, and away from big crowds. And um, hopefully um, I will see you soon.